It's about that time. What's happening in your city? Got love for your city? I can't believe it. Two weeks in a row, and we're on air. I know. <laughs> no this is, interruptions. This is big time. Everybody's here. No, no, no. I was absent last week. No, yeah. Kareem right. was out this Kareem week. Kareem so was out last week as well. Oh, he yeah. was. Yeah. 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 Well, and mm. and we want to send our uh, deepest, uh, sincere sentiments to uh, Kareem, and the family. Mm -hmm. Kareem, uh, peace out to you and. Um, Blessings to the family, mm -hmm. and uh, we hope to see you back on, on set here real soon. Yes. All right. So uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to another episode of City Views <laughs> here with the longest-running television show on cable TV. Really? 30 years. Wow. Can you believe that? Wow. So uh, Tim Driscoll and the whole crew, um, Rick Dalval and the gang, who uh, were the original... Um, Originators. <laughs> Casting crew. <laughs> the original originators. Uh, and then uh, Sam Slaby and, and company. Oh, along, yeah. Along with uh, Bill Battle. Uh, mm. Rest in peace. Rebo. Uh, yeah, Rebo. Rebo. Yep. And then uh, somehow we inherited the rest. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are. The rest <laughs> of the story. As, Doing uh, it. Garner Ted Armstrong used to uh, recant. But uh, it's always nice to be here, especially with my lovely and talented co-host because they just bring so much literally to the table <laughs> brought my glasses to the table <laughs> so did i <laughs> yes our glasses <laughs> see they need the glasses because if you knew what they had in these cups yeah, yeah. right we got to be able yeah. to see it's what's coffee. in those it's coffee should i say it like in new york it's coffee it's coffee <laughs> come on come on i gotta blow on it it's a little hot oh my goodness <laughs> So, yeah, so another week, we are at the third week of April, and I don't know where the month went. No. Uh, I don't know if anybody no. else feels the same way. Yeah, we do. But it's funny, like, somebody said to me, oh, next week is blah, blah, and I'm like, yeah. it's what? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it flew by. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I am I'm kind of in shock, but um, this Thursday night, what do we got going on, Jack? Oh, my goodness, the great business giveaway yes. coming at you. Sponsored by the Northwest Connecticut Area Chamber of Commerce. Yes. yes. And uh, it's going to be a huge business giveaway. I guarantee you that. Yes. Lots and of vendors. Um, first hundred people oh, yeah. get a free gift. Yeah. So Ooh. with that, that's a reason yeah. to go. Yeah. And it's at the Little Red Barn Brewery yep. Yep. Yes. up in Winstead. And it's going to be fabulous. Um, a lot of business is going to be there and a lot of giveaways and tchotchkes and all kinds yeah. of stuff. That's my kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great event to network at. Yeah. <laughs> I love the Put freebies. The bag. I have a collection of freebies from so many different events, and yeah. I'm just like, well, what am I going to do today? What yeah. am I going to use today? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. So that'll be great. So that, again, Northwest Connecticut Chamber of Commerce, yes. putting that on, yes. um, and the fabulous Joanne Ryan. Yes, um, yes. So I'm excited for that Thursday night, and that's from 4 to 7, Little yes. Red Barn Brewers. Yes. So that'll be great. I may try to run away. The kids, you know, run they're away. off this week. <laughs> She's going to run away because the kids I'm are gonna off this week. I'm going to run away. The kids are off this week, and they've got a play date Thursday starting at 3, and I might try and slip out of there maybe for the last hour or something. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm like just five minutes go. down the road. So Yeah, yeah. and it's not far from us because no. we live near each other. So, And I noticed um, <clears throat> amongst the, the hectic activities that Corey's uh, – indulges in she had time to make it 
to our Hall of Fame inductee ceremony yeah. last yes. week at Fairview. Yeah, that, and, that was uh, a busy day for me. Busy day. <laughs> busy day. And, uh, everywhere that day. I was all the way she to was. at the Capitol for a women's business development event. And then from there, raced straight to that event of Yeah, she followed the governor all the way into uh, Harrington. I thought that was she pretty interesting. She didn't follow him. She was in the car with him. <laughs> Limousine. She was like, I'm there. Ned, move over. I need a ride. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, that uh, that was uh, an awesome time, and we had an opportunity to recognize two outstanding members in Amazing. our community. Yes. Mara Milo, who is the president of Northwest Community Bank, mm -hmm. and also Dr. Mike Rook, who is the president of uh, Northwestern Connecticut Connecticut Community College. Yes, now just State of Connecticut Community College, I guess. Is yeah. what it's really called now, right? Since yeah, they're they part of their con all, the consortium. Yeah, yes, they, yes. Yes. yeah they all consortium. Yes. Yeah. Which is so cool now because um, the, accredi the credits are obviously broadened out now. So you can attend one of these colleges and get the and all required credits. And they're yes. all transferable. Yes. Yep, yep. And you can attend the community colleges for? Free. Free. For That's the right. first two years, correct? Yes. yes. I, and I think there are income guidelines with that if i'm not mistaken yeah. with that but yeah that's a great um program and then if you want to go on because a lot of us don't go on i have a two-year yeah i don't have a four-year degree like my kids um but i mean you know at least i have the two-year but my my point being that you know some people just kind of cut it off there i was done <laughs> you know i was like yeah i'm done so and then went right to work so i mean i did i finished the f the full four and i i said i'm done Good after for that you i'm like i'm not getting a master's yeah. i don't want to <laughs> and go on it yeah. from then i have gone on and taken like certificate courses oh that's even Good those too. are I have great. A certificate yeah, course, those, so, those yeah. are great. Those yep. are nice short term, like one month, six months yep. type of thing. I I can do that. I'll take certificate. That courses, works yeah. into my ADHD schedule. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> of like, oh yeah, I'll take that certificate, squirrel, and then come back, and then <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So, <laughs> that's, that's yeah. That kind of works for me. And can I tell you a very humbling situation that happened to me? Sure. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> you know how you get these uh, online offers for these educational yes. programs. Uh -huh. yes. So uh, I was looking at one, I said, let me, you just kind of, you know, go through it, fill it out. So I did. And because I guess in the back of my mind, I, I finished two and a half years of college. I was plan claiming, planning to go on back and life happened. Happens, so. mm -hmm. yep. Um, but I've always had that, you know, man, if I could uh, just get those last 30 credits in, you know. So uh, one of the representatives from uh, the online uh, uh, curriculums called me back within 30 seconds of you hitting send. Well, actually, it took me about 30 <laughs> days to get back with me. I was like, ah, oh, okay. these people ain't serious. But uh, she called me back, and you know they go through the whole application process. Right. You know, what's your name? You know, so on and so forth. So uh, she said, uh, so how much you know education do you have? I told her two years, two and a half years of college, and she said, um, well, you know, what what was your last year of education? I mean, mm -hmm. when did you graduate from high school? So I told her, and which was, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I tried, try to get him to say it out loud, people. I'm sorry, I'll I say tried. Mine. I was 83, 1983. <laughs> I'm the oldie of the group. Lucky, 1983. Lucky you. So, uh, so I told her, and she paused for a moment, and I'm <laughs> thinking, you know, what she pausing for, and then she says, "Well, sir, uh, it was nice talking to you. I'm sorry, but." <laughs> You don't qualify for our program. I'm like, wow. Ah, I'm gonna sue you for age discrimination. Yeah, right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. So wow. I said, you know, along with uh, getting that card in the mail. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh, AARP. Somebody should slap them because they send those yeah. out when you hit fifty. Yeah. And they send them out when you're like forty nine. Yeah. Like you're not even fifty, and yeah. it's like bang! It's in the, yeah. Somebody should just that to they're, them. They're trying to prep you. you oh, know? prep this! Yeah. I'm telling you because that when I got that, I was insulted. You know, now I'm just just happy that you know I'm fifty eight, and it is what it is, and the wrinkles and the bleh. so it is what it is. I'm embracing my elder years. Well, so. I, I, I think you should, though, Karen. I, I mean, am. You and still I, have a lot to offer. I do, but yeah. you know what? I just, I love my career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love my family. I love what I do. And I'm not going to be one of those that is going to hang in there for like, you know, till I'm 97, you know, with yeah. my oh. pain oh. still <laughs> trying to teach etiquette and stuff. Uh, another five to seven years, I'm out. 
and mm -hmm. uh, you know, want to spend time. Just have it as kids. online courses now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's what they said. You're out, people. If you're that old, <laughs> you can't study now. I was so mad. I was, and, and you know, she she didn't even give me a chance to respond. She's kind of hung up the phone. Oh, and I'm, I'm like, sorry, oh. you don't qualify. <laughs> click, click. Yeah, I'm like She's trying like, to look oh. for the number so I call her back. <laughs> I'm like, you. But and, that and, is so <laughs> wild because I mean, you read about um like nine, <laughs> 90 year old grandma finally getting her degree. Yeah. And walking across the stage, so yeah. wow. Uh, I guess they might have misunderstood me, and they might have said thought that I said 1881 <laughs> instead of 1981. So. 1881. Nonetheless, so. um, <coughs> excuse me, Carice. Yes. How about uh, showing some love to our sponsors? Sure. Let me put on my voiceover <laughs> skills. Voiceover. That's your voiceover costume. There it yes. is. Glasses put on the black. <laughs> put something black in front of me. You know, okay. you can't see me. Okay. So, our big city sponsors, Toth Insurance Agency, 1151 East Main Street, Torrington. Better protection, better value, 860-496-7771. Toth INS at optonline.net. Next, we have Mel Brickman and Health Markets, 16 McDermott Ave, Suite 1, Torrington. You better, better call, call Mel. Mel. He can be reached, 860-307-1128. Healthmarkets.com slash local dash health dash INS. Brooks Todd and McNeil Insurance, 69 Water Street, Torrington. Keeping an eye on your insurance needs since 1839. 860-598-8753. Brooks Todd McNeil.com. Dr. Michael Curry, 30 Peck Road, Suite 2105, Torrington. Pediatric care for over 50 years, 860-482-8177, torringtonpediatrics.com. Thank you Great so job. much, Maurice. We appreciate that. If anyone wants to hire me, <laughs> I can be reached at 860-361-9985. Sorry, yes. I can't. Don't hire me because I can't read call that far. <laughs> <laughs> but we better call Mel. <clears throat> so that's fabulous. So we love our sponsors, and thanks to their generosity, we are here live at this wonderful TV station and show every week. So yeah. fabulous. Absolutely. And uh, we're going to be waiting to hear uh, momentarily from Michelle Cook, who's going to be calling us, giving us an update on what's going on in Hartford. And uh, she's going to be letting us know what's cooking. What's yeah. cooking. What's cooking. Yeah. So, so that'll be good. In the meantime, Karen, I, I have to discuss this with you because mm -hmm. uh, it's, I think you're becoming a Facebook phenomenon. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just like going through and looking through stuff and then boom. It's like Karen and all her fabulousness. <laughs> it's like she's here. She's there. She's everywhere. I'm like. This is, she's like Mary Tyler Moore, you know, yes. just like boom, you know. Well, you know, it's funny and it's, it, it, it's funny because I have two careers and I love what I do. So by day, food bank person, by night, etiquette person. She's a moonlighter. And lighter. I just, a you know, lighter. I'm a moonlighter and I love what I do. And, and my positions take me very many places, which are so much fun. Nice. And so I just love it. So yeah, I'm very, very fortunate. A lot of people um, call their work a job. Mm -hmm. I call it a pleasure. Great. Uh, really, yeah. with doing both of what I do. And uh, I get to meet some great people, um, TV people. I meet um, a lot of our community people. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, but you're on the uh, media outlets uh, to the point where people think you're one of those news personalities. It's like, yeah. is, is Karen and a radio. news person? Yeah, I'm yeah. not. And yeah. I'm not. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> I, I have a great connection. And, and Carice, I took Carice along yeah. with oh, me yeah. up to Massachusetts. I do a monthly TV show up in Massachusetts. They're an NBC affiliate. And then I also do Connecticut NBC here. Um, but I took Carice and everything. And it's just a lot of fun. And I've been at that one station in Massachusetts for over 11 years now. Mm -hmm. I mean, every month wow. I'm on. And then... Um, NBC, it's it's a couple of years it's been um, through many different co-hosts, but um, it, it's a lot of fun. Like I said, I you know, I get to know the staff. I know everybody now. Like when I go into NBC, everybody's like, hey, hey, you know, and uh, it, it again, it's fun. So I'm glad that I chose what I chose for this this field. And uh, I'm very blessed. I so. think you're cut out for it. There's just something about your personality that just screams. 
you must pay attention to the <laughs> etiquette. I mean, she's she's fun. Well, well you I know, mean, just, she's fun. Just, well, we and how lucky I am. She lives so close to me. I know. Oh, I know. Oh. And you know, like I said, it's it's all about fun. And when when people hire me for the etiquette, I tell them I'm not that stuffy. <laughs> You're not Mary Poppins? I'm not that person. She's okay. not Mary Poppins. No. Um, I am doing, my husband and I are going away to this fabulous little seaside resort, um, May 1st and 2nd in New Hampshire, um, for um, classes that I got to teach. Oh, And wow. we get to go overnight. They put me up. They do. I teach one class, and there's all kinds of networking events and, and dinner parties and all that stuff, and it's a nice little getaway, so I just love what I do. So, so yeah. great. I, I mean. Think, I think we have someone on the line. Ooh, oh, who is we? on the line? <clears throat> oh, is that Michelle? It could be. It is? Okay, remind me what I have to press again. The Just the red one, and yep, then the green? Yep. Yep. All right. Red, green, boom. Hello, Miss State Representative Michelle Cook. What's cooking? What's cooking, What's cooking girl? Oh, it's a long drive home today. I'll bet. I'll bet. You have been so busy. I haven't seen you in weeks, it seems, almost months, it seems. Um, you know, usually we get together or see each other, or, but I haven't seen you forever. I know. Absence, I, I guess, makes the heart grow fonder. It does. <laughs> I miss you so much. I can't no, believe. But, you know, that's a good tie-in to the fact that I absolutely know we will see each other next week. Next Thursday. And that's what I said that we would talk about tonight when we got on the phone. What is next Thursday, Michelle? Oh, well, next Thursday. Next Thursday happens to be Food Insecurity Day at the Capitol. It will be our second annual, which I'm so very excited about. We are so excited. I'm so glad I, we got to catch up today on the phone, Michelle and I, um, discussing, you know, the agenda and what we're going to be doing and how the day is going to flow. And um, State Representative Michelle Cook, for the second year in a row, has put together this day at the state capitol for food pantries and those in the food insecurity um, arena to get together, talk about the plight of food insecurity, as well as collaborate, network, and bring this in front of the legislators. Very and nice. Michelle has pulled this off. Last year was great, but I think this year is going to be even better. I think this year is going to be double what we had last year. Wow. We have statewide participation this year, which yes. I think is so critically important. Yes. You know, given the fact that there's so many people in all of our communities um, that are really struggling um, in a variety of different ways, and maybe they're not necessarily struggling in the world of putting food on their table, but maybe they are and they're happening to choose between paying a bill or getting a prescription or, or getting healthy food. Um, and, and as we know, you know, being food insecure doesn't hit just one demographic. Um, right. It hits all demographics. And so bringing that awareness to the forefront is so critical, especially for those of us who are policymakers and that are really trying to guide the decisions at our state house to help, you know, where dollars and cents go and to be able to do things that really matter for people, and that's to give them healthy food options and actually food on their table. Absolutely. And, and again, this is our second annual Connecticut Food Insecurity Awareness Day. Uh, it will take place at the Capitol and it will be next Thursday, the 25th at 11 a.m. And we invite the public to come. So if any of you are listening and would like to be a part of it, I know Carice will be there yes. uh, because she is part of our board. Uh, Michelle will be hosting and I will be there as well as many um, locals, um, dignitaries, um, legislators. Uh, from all over, and uh, we can't wait to to talk about it. And and that's how things get done: is you must bring it to the forefront and talk about that's these right. issues. Um, so we can't wait to do it. So again, we want to thank you, uh, Michelle, for doing this. And I think it's very important things that we're working on. I absolutely agree. And this year as well, we are in session next Thursday, so we know that there'll be a significant amount of uh, legislators that are in the building, probably all of us. Yes. Um, and this year we're actually hosting in the Capitol at the Hall of Flags as opposed to in a hearing room last year. Mm. So it will be at 11 o'clock in the Hall of Flags over at the Capitol. Um, so for anybody out there that is listening, please, if you are interested in joining us, please join us. Um, but it is, it is really about education. And I know that this morning you and 
Danny Hartnett were on the radio, and then Jeff Siner had called me thereafter to to give a um, to give a comment to. And you know, he asked me what I thought the most important part of the day was, and my response to him was very simple. I believe the most important component of this day is about education. Yes. Um, and educating folks on things that, you know, maybe we take for granted in our own individual worlds, but other folks really just don't have, you know, things or, or the knowledge of where to go to get the help that they need. Exactly. So I hope, you know, I can't thank you, Karen, and our food bank enough for really bringing the original concept to the table last year um, and helping be an integral part of, you know, the second annual, and I'm hoping we have many more annuals to follow thereafter. Absolutely. And, you know, talking about food insecurity, I think what a lot of people don't know, so this is something too new, um, people think of a food pantry uh, maybe as for those, you know, and, and again, to put a, put a name or a stigma on it, oh, the poor people or, the, you know, it is not. A food pantry is available to everyone and anyone that is facing food insecurity. So you say, well, what is food insecurity? Like you said, Michelle, somebody who is not able to make ends meet to be able to put nutritious food on the table, maybe at the end of the month or whenever. And food pantries are available all across the state of Connecticut to everyone. There are income guidelines, but again, no one is ever turned away. There are various programs within our food bank um, that anyone and everyone can get food from. And again, uh, people need to hear that this is a supplemental program. This is not people, because I think the fallacy that everyone has is that, oh, people get to go there, they get their groceries free every week. That's not what it is. It is a supplement to their original or what they are already bringing to the table with maybe their food stamps or their grocery shopping. It is a supplement and is not two weeks worth of food. So that is something that I think a lot of people need to be educated on and, and learn about what a food pantry can do to help you. Now, with that being said, I think um, we should uh, definitely celebrate the latest accomplishment uh, that you and Michelle have collaborated on that will uh, certainly help the food bank uh, establish its uh, goal in uh, serving the public, mm. but also to making sure that you have all the resources you need to run the daily operations as they have developed from the food bank. Would you like to elaborate on that? Sure. Michelle, would you like to take that with our grant and, 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 uh, and uh, announce that? Oh, I would love to be able to announce that. <laughs> so, look, I'm so excited about this announcement that I didn't even know that you were asking me about that I pulled over and parked in a parking lot. <laughs> I wasn't driving. It. So, and understand, I've been at the Capitol since probably about 8 o'clock this morning, and so I'm actually finally trying to get back home so I can go back for 8 o'clock in the morning. There you go. So, um, but, so... You know, recognizing, and, and look, in full disclosure, and I know that we've discussed this here before and we'll continue to discuss it, but I am, um, I am blessed to be a part of the Friendly Hands Food Bank family, and I am on their board. Um, I'm on their board, and I put myself on boards of, of organizations that I truly believe in and the ones that, that make a difference in their community. And I think that, you know, Friendly Hands has, has done that leaps and bounds. And so, you know, being so involved, you know, just before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and since, you know, we have truly outgrown our location um, down on King Street. And, and that is no discredit to the founding father, you know, Mo, God rest her soul, and all of the great work that she did with the food bank and, and getting it up and running in a community setting. And quite frankly, it was brilliant in, when it happened. But we have literally outgrown our residents, if you will. So... Um, you know, seeing the vision that that Karen and Danny and our board has and our staff down there, um, I was truly honored to work with them and help them get a $2 million grant, give or take, um, to, to relocate our building. And mind you, um, you know, I know that I would be haunted for life by Mo if we moved it anywhere out of town. Right. So it was really about bringing that building somewhere, not in a residential area, but definitely on a bus line um, with easy access off and on to ensure that we have triple, if not quadruple, the amount of space or more um, to offer better services than the great service that we already offer to our clients and be able to offer that 
in a different type of a, um, you know, in a different type of food bank concept. But that will be for a later conversation. Um, but I'm just so excited that that is moving forward. Um, I just, you know, Karen, you take it from there. I'm just real excited about it. <laughs> I know. Here, no. here. I think you guys hey, deserve well, a nice hey. round of applause for that. Well, here, you know, here. Um, Michelle um, w was instrumental in this. But um, the vision that we have moving forward now that we have been awarded this $2 million grant um, is that we are going to bring a better, a bigger and better food bank to Torrington, to the residents, and to everyone. Because remember, our food bank serves all of Connecticut. Um, anyone can come at any time. And um, with this money from the state of Connecticut, they are going to see uh, firsthand what it looks like to offer um, a nonprofit agency, um, all of the things that need to be offered, not just food in our food bank. One of the things we pride ourselves on are some of the um, outside programs that we offer, such as our pet food pantry. Pet food, yep. And that's every month. If you can't feed yourself, you're certainly struggling to feed your pet. Um, so we have that. And then, of course, our biggest thing now is our farmer's market, which brings in fresh produce every Wednesday. And we bring that to our clients. So they get to come in and shop from all fresh produce, not damaged, not day old, none of that. We have a, a an anonymous donor that gives us van, vans full of this that we're able to do. So again, we're trying to breed a new type of food pantry, food bank um, with this uh, grant money, which we will um, continue to do. And we will um, have inviting all of you. I think we'll probably do a show from there one day. Oh yeah. Um, but again, uh, we can't wait to showcase all of that. And uh, Michelle, yeah, we can't. We're so excited. So we, um, they'll be the first to know. You'll all be the first to know uh, when we announce a location. Um, we're still looking. We have a few prospects, and uh, we're very excited. Wow. Well, it's uh, one small step for Torrington, <laughs> and one giant step for food insecurity. Yes, it yes. Is. You could have always, said it better. As always, Michelle, we thank you for your contributions to the show. And uh, we look forward to uh, talking with you again next week. And you can share with us all the good things that are uh, taking place and that uh, you guys are doing up there on the state capitol. Thank you. I just want, um, you know, to bring it to everybody's attention, we are at the end of our legislative session, so we only have a few weeks left. We gavel out on May 8th at midnight. Um, so we will be... You know, in the in the Capitol building, in the um, in the chambers. So, if anybody has questions or, or they're interested in what we're doing, as always, we are always live on CTN Television Network while we are doing the state's work in the state house. Um, and you could reach your legislators by email or always call their phone lines if you have questions or comments or you know concerns about the legislation. But at the end of the day, we can't do our job if we don't hear from you. Um, and I know that I say that time and time and time again, but it's truly the case. It's like the food bank, right? Right. We wouldn't have known what they needed if, if we didn't hear from them. And I was so happy to be able to hear from them and bring back, you know, what they need. So, you know, you guys do great work there. I was happy to be in live and in person with you last week, and I look forward to being able to be live and in person with you guys again in a few weeks. Well, uh, just make sure you drive safely. Yes. Arrive home in one piece, safe and sound, okay? That's an order. I And again, that's why I pulled right over and parked <laughs> in a parking lot. So, I love it. Um, I thank you for that, you know, that wish of, of safety, and I bring that back to all of you as you leave later on this, this evening. And thank you for um, ensuring that our community is absolutely well-informed on what's happening in the northwest corner. Appreciate you, Michelle. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good night. All right, folks. All Bye. Right. You Take care, guys. Bye, Bye now. Bye. Now, so I want to I want to just, you know, I'm feeling a little naughty, uh -oh. um, <laughs> not naughty uh -oh. like that. But but, you know, I, we were talking about Karen and, you know, her etiquette. And mm. and then I looked down at my cup and I realized yeah. I realized okay. yeah. they I did. To, yeah. Can where's you the, zoom in on this? Do you see what I did? Where's the chapstick? I, I decorated <laughs> my cup. I always forget where I drink from. And then I but. And then I remembered seeing Karen post something. Yeah. Karen, yes. have I been naughty? <laughs> yeah. Did I do a no so something naughty? one of the etiquette faux pas, and, and, and this is a great way to showcase this. So if you could see Carissa's cup right here, and you could see it there. Oh, wait, I think over you could here, see it. See, you could see all of the lipstick all the way around. 
Now, that is a huge faux pas. So when a lady either has lipstick, chapstick, or whatever, lip gloss, anything on, when they're drinking out of a cup, they should have one, Oops. one set of lips. <laughs> right. And you should sip <laughs> from that one set, that area there at all times, rather than all the way around. And that's not to call you out, but again, I think I called say, myself. Out. I know, right? <laughs> so I think people want to know. Well, wh where does that come in with etiquette? Well, you know, believe it or not, it is very difficult to get lipstick is, off of is. bar yeah. glasses. Yeah, it is. And it goes to that. So when you're in a bar and they're going in and they take it and they try to, you know, they mm -hmm. quick wash it and they do, they go mm -hmm. in the, the three different sinks. It's hard to get that off. So you're helping your local bartender and this is not, but this again, you're helping the dishwasher, all of them, to if you just sip from one area on the cup. Mm -hmm. So etiquette tip of the day, sip from one area on your cup, not like Carice did all over. <laughs> so going on that, I have another question that I want to ask you. And sure. I always feel bad when when you at a restaurant with cloth napkins, yes. right? And I'm always like, I want to wipe my lipstick on these cloth napkins. Is that really bad to do too? No, because you know you are in there now. You should not do that on the na <laughs> on the napkin. You shouldn't take the napkin and it shouldn't be lips all <laughs> over. But again, you should be taking and dabbing. You shouldn't be dabbing, okay? <laughs> you shouldn't be dabbing. You should be <laughs> taking your lip and you should be dabbing like that. And again, you know what, when you do, yes, like I'm that. Sorry. But again, in that same spot, okay? Uh -huh. So if you have the lipstick and I'm, I always have my lipstick on. So when you do that, dab from that spot there and that on the cloth napkin. Now, those are always out to be laundered. So they actually go to the laundry, they're, they're done and they come back to the restaurants. Um, again, you try to, to refrain from getting it all over keep it in one spot but let's refrain from also sneezing or blowing oh, our yes, nose no. into a that's napkin. a big no-no because that is just I, no no so Jacques where do you sneeze and blow your nose <coughs> well let, not blow your nose let's take that out of the equation where do you sneeze when you're in a fancy restaurant and you don't do it in your napkin where do you go to the restroom yeah well that's a good that's a good one but you should do it in your elbow well, to well, the yeah. side well yeah you know, but I, don't blow your nose there in the side but <laughs> in your napkin but again you always go off to the side so yeah L lord <laughs> please help me control these co-hosts they just take over the show hey i just we, we're here we're here we okay. are ready to go and listen i can put lips all over your, your <laughs> well, I, well i don't that might be a good thing <laughs> you're talking about filling your cup in the morning <laughs> that will do it right there <laughs> But yeah, so those are just some fun etiquette tips. And I think maybe if there's time each week, I'll try to throw one in. I think we should do that yeah. because yeah. I do believe that some of your tips are very, very uh, helpful, mm -hmm. especially in social situations yes. yep. when you're not quite sure. Right. And I, I'll tell you one, I got one on. Okay. Uh, we were having lunch um, at De Capo. And uh, I don't exactly know what made me do it, but I did it. Uh-oh. I took the napkin and I put it. Oh, oh no, he did it. Yeah. Oh, no, that is a huge yeah. no-no. Were you having lobster? I know. Were you I wasn't having <laughs> lobster. Okay. But um, <clears throat> I won't say who this person was, but she's, uh, let's just say, very astute. <laughs> Aware she, of etiquette. Yeah, she hmm. looked at me like, what are you doing? And I'm like, <laughs> I want to uh, not get anything on my white shit, thank you. And then I thought about it, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, oh, that excuse off. Excuse me. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you're in a certain class restaurant, yeah. you know, uh, I'm now I was always under the impression it was three star or better. No. Um, the, but, the napkin never goes anywhere but on your lap. On your yeah. lap. Um, the only thing that would go in your uh, shirt or, it's you know, like a seafood bib is a seafood bib. Well, if you're having lobster, right. if yeah. not, we don't make it that and, you know, go in there. But um, speaking of which, this is funny. Tonight before I came up there, we had something with sauce on it. Yep. And I did take the napkin 
Uh, but this was at home in front of my husband. I shoved it in the front so I could, you know, because I knew I was coming here and I wasn't going to change and fix my hair all over again. So just to eat a few bites, I put the napkin there. Now that was at home. You don't do that in a restaurant. My husband's like, look at you. So yeah, I got that look uh, from that person. Like, I think you've had uh, too many dinners at the Ponderosa, Jacques. <laughs> the Ponderosa. But uh, you know, you never too want too many wines you, before well, you, you. You know, you never want a one steak sauce on your nice suit. So uh, exactly. You know what though. Uh, I think uh, it's the bottom of the hour. Yeah. And you know what that means. Uh, it's a time big for city Carice. sponsors. A big city sponsors. Once again. Yep. I should have these memorized. Let me see if I could do it without my glasses. I don't no, think I'll try. Okay. <laughs> so, from the top, we've got Toth Insurance Agency, 1151 East Main Street, Torrington. Better protection, better value. 860-496-7771. Toth INS at optonline.net. Next, we have Mel Brickman and Health Markets, 16 McDermott Ave, Suite 1, Torrington. Better call Mel. 860-307-1128, healthmarkets.com slash local dash health dash INS. Brooks, Todd, and McNeil Insurance, 69 Water Street, Torrington. Keeping an eye on your insurance needs since 1839. 860-598-8753, brookstoddmcneil.com. Dr. Michael Curry, 30 Peck Road, Suite 2105 Torrington, pediatric care for over 50 years, 860-482-8177, torringtonpediatrics.com. Thank you so much, Carice, for the shout out to our sponsors. Yeah. <clears throat> and I want to give a big shout out to our field remote team yes. uh, and the segments that they're doing and uh, big shout out to Pascal Nijame who mm -hmm. is heading up uh, that uh, work for Culture for a Cause and uh, she's also a real estate agent she is and mm -hmm. she has some really really uh, impactful data that uh, she's going to be sharing great with tips. us yep. great tips on um, especially for you uh, first-time home buyers mm. uh, you might want to check this out so if uh, we got that queued up, um, we'll uh, check out Pascal Nijame as she uh, gives us some tips on uh, your next real estate buy. Have you seen headlines talking about the increase in foreclosures in today's housing market? If so, they may leave you feeling a bit uneasy about what's ahead. But remember, these clickbait titles don't always give you the full story. The truth is, if you compare the current numbers with what usually happens in the market, you'll see there's no need to worry. Let's put the headlines into perspective. The increase the media is calling attention to is misleading. That's because they're only comparing the most recent numbers to a time where foreclosures were at historic lows. And that's what making it sound like a bigger deal than it is. In 2020 and 2021, the moratorium and forbearance program helped millions of homeowners stay in their homes, allowing them to get back on their feet during a very challenging period. And when the moratorium came to an end, there was an expected rise in foreclosures. But just because foreclosures are up, it doesn't necessarily mean that the housing market is in trouble. Instead of comparing today's numbers with the last few abnormal years, it's better to compare to long-term trends, specifically to the housing crash, since that's what people worry will happen again. Take a look at this graph. It uses foreclosure data from Adam, a property data provider, to show foreclosure activity has been consistently lower since the crash in 2008. So, while foreclosure filings are up in the latest report, it's clear this is nothing like it was back then. In fact, we're not even back at the levels we had seen in more normal years like 2019. As Rick Sharga, founder and CEO of the CJ Patrick Company explains, foreclosure activity is still only at about 60% of pre-pandemic levels. That's largely because buyers today are more qualified and less likely to default on their loans. Delinquency rates are still low and most homeowners have enough equity to keep them from going into foreclosure. As Molly Bozel, 
principal economist at CoreLogic, says, U.S. mortgage delinquency rates remained healthy in October, with the overall delinquency rate unchanged from a year earlier and the serious delinquency rate remaining at a historic low. Borrowers in later stages of delinquencies are finding alternatives to defaulting on their home loans. The reality is, while increasing, the data shows a foreclosure crisis is not where the market is today or where it's headed. Bottom line is, even though the housing market is experiencing an unexpected rise in foreclosures, it's nowhere near the crisis levels seen when the housing bubble burst. If you have questions about what you're hearing or reading about the housing market, let's connect. And that was Pascal Nijame giving some, uh, some proper data there. Uh, for uh, all you people that are interested in purchasing a home, either for your yeah. first time or might be doing some refinancing, whatever the case may be. But uh, we're going to have a tip coming at you uh, weekly from Pascal as she uh, shares with us her knowledge on what's going out there in the house market. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Which is ever changing. It, ever it changing. totally is. Totally. And with inflation being the way it is, uh, rents and things of that nature seem to be uh, hard to handle these days. I can't even imagine because um, we just celebrated five years in our home mm -hmm. and it was pre-pandemic. We bought in 2019 and I can't believe some of the rent, yeah. Um, yeah. the rentals that I've seen, the prices on yeah. them. And then it's you crazy. need like security, uh, this, you know, First two month, months, last month, security. I mean, you, it's almost like five, six thousand dollars just to get in that first month. Yeah. And then you've got. Yeah. So, I mean, I can't even imagine. So, yeah, that's that's great. Uh, great tips from Pascal. By great the time tips. you get through paying all the uh, security deposits, you ain't got enough to uh, fulfill the lease agreement. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seriously, you really gotta save, and and it, it it's crazy. And you know what's what's sad is that you see so many stories of people renting and not to because it's not their property, yeah. just really destroying yeah. um, the properties, which makes the prices go up. And you know it's yeah. it's sad. See it's sad. now, now I, me personally, I, I I you know observe these situations, and it's always um, befuddling to me how two uh, parties can be involved in a contract and they become so, there's so much animosity built up that neither it becomes, instead of a win-win situation, it becomes a win-lose or lose-lose. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And uh, I think that there needs to be just a little bit more um, cooperation in, in terms of recognizing uh, and, and you can do this in any type of negotiation, whether it's a marriage, whether it's you know a sports franchise, a business deal, whatever the case may be. But you you can't always get what you want. Mm. You know, when you're working with another group of people, another entity, another person, you know that compromise usually brings about the best outcome. But I think, you know, we our society has changed so much. And tell me if I'm wrong. This is just my opinion, that society has changed since the pandemic. Since. I think we were going towards it prior to. Right. But, but such a traumatic change with since the pandemic of a me, me society. Oh, yes. Everything oh, yes. is about me. Everything Everything's is about, about me, me. Nothing about you. And what can I get? What can I do? All about what is in it for me. And I think um, that we've really lost... Um, a lot of civility yeah. um, with that. And it's very difficult to even just transact regular business, whether it's at a bank or, or somewhere like that. And people just or feel Dunkin that. Donuts. Or Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> oh. So tell us about your customer service oh, problem today. And, and this has been happening a lot more lately, I, I find. Um, so today I went to Dunkin' Donuts in um, Bristol and my son wanted chai. And I was, I just needed a little boost. So I was going to get a churro coffee latte, um, which, you know, I figured, you know what I mean? Let me get a little boost. So anyways, um, they were handing us the cups through the drive-thru and they were both labeled. And I, I double checked. I said, okay, so this is the chai. And she said, the guy said, yes. So I handed my son the chai. I had the coffee and we continued driving. I was taking them to spare time bowling. And then my son kept saying to me, this tastes funny, mom. This tastes funny. I'm like, 
It's chai. It's fine. It says chai right there on the cup. It's fine. And chai it's the tastes chai. different too. Yeah, a little bit. It's right. not your regular tea. tea you know. So, so yeah. I, I'm thinking they probably just made it stronger, or you know. Right. So we got to spare time, and at that point, I decided to drink my churro Ooh. coffee latte, only to realize that was chai. Oh. So I'm fuming because I don't give my kids caffeine. You know, we've seen too many stories of um, I won't mention from what you know, other vendor, but um, caffeinated drinks that are killing people because yes. the caffeine is so high. Right. Now, you have to keep in mind, kids' bodies, you know, their metabolism can only process so much. So giving them caffeine it is never a good thing. No. Um, so I went back through the drive through This was a drive through only. And they were like, oh, we must have mixed up the labels. Come back through. We'll give you, t we'll make two new ones for you. And I got to the window and I said, you know what? This is not just a big inconvenience. I said, you, my son drank an entire cup of the wrong of stuff. The wrong and stuff. It was caffeine. Something that's caffeinated. Yeah. I said, I think, you know, that we, use, we should be compensated with something a little extra. Yeah. Maybe a couple donuts. Um, and he looked at me. He goes, we can't do that. We don't do that here. I said, excuse me? He goes, well, we fixed it for you. We made you two new ones. And I'm like, where's the manager? This well, is the damage was already done. and Damage was already done. We have already moved out of, in that situation, the customers are always right. Right? Yeah. And that used to be the premise. And it is no longer. It is no longer No the longer that. And, I, you know, it, it got to the point where we got to spare time. And then I decided I'm not letting this rest. Mm -hmm. Because now I'm starting to think of all the different scenarios of what could, what could be going through my son's body, right, what's happening, right. you know, what right. a, what should I be prepared for? Is his heart like beating crazy yeah. fast, faster than it normally should in right. his body? You know, and I called again and I, and now the manager, I got the manager and he goes, I totally understand. I have a 10 year old son. Um, I don't give him caffeine either. I said, so how much caffeine is in this one drink? And right. he said, it's equivalent to a medium sized coffee for an adult. And I'm like, so my son just downed a small cup of churro latte that's equivalent to a medium-sized coffee. That's a lot. And I said, that's a lot. You know, I said, this is, this is outrageous. I said, I, you know, this is not acceptable. And he, at that point, he decided to try and make the situation, you know, put me at ease a little by giving, offering me a little more. But, you know, I'm like, listen, you know, and it goes back to even at restaurants where little kids were accidentally given a cup that had al alcohol in it instead right. of their juice. Yep, or soda or something. You, right. you know, it's like, but the customer service was, there was none. Right. There was none. And I'm not surprised, um, and again, not by the venue, but just that, you know, people don't want to fix the problems. They don't want to hear about it, this and that. They just, they, and again, it's very sad. So customer service, I really think, has gone downhill um, in a lot of areas, not just there. No. Um, but you should areas. take it to the management up in their corporate. Yeah. You know, make a call to their corporate, whoever owns it, do some research as to where that Bristol store, you know, at their management or their corporate is. I know, like, for example, a couple in our town is are owned by one person. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then some other one, you know, they're uh, either simple, um, uh, separate franchisees or, you know, so again, do yeah. some research, Curtis. Yeah. That but if you guys that. remember, though, when you're talking about service, when I talk to my friends, kids, about how it used to be back in the day, when I tell them that you used to go to a gas station and actually get your oil checked, oh yeah, mm. get your windshield Washed. wiped, mm -hmm. I mean, people used to actually come out to the car and take care of you. Yeah. And they look at You didn't at have me. to get out. No. You would pay them right there or give yeah. them the credit card. It was all right there. You oh, sat in the car. That was the best. But they would look at me like. What are you talking about? Is yeah. that an episode from yeah. the Twilight Zone? Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what happened to me yeah. at, at a Shell gas station, one of them in Torrington. It was so cold out that I went around. And I, I know you're not technically supposed to do this. But I didn't go into the store. I put it. I, you know, set the little. Thing. The, the thing, yeah, yeah. The little and I just ran back in my car real quick because it takes a while to fill up, yeah. you know, an SUV, it's a bigger tank, and the the pump stopped. So I run back outside, I started back, 
and I run back in my car, the pump stopped. I know, I hate when that happens. And I'm like, what's going on? No, the person inside was shutting it off. Are you kidding me? Why? Because you're not you're... supposed to leave your car. I said, I'm by, I'm literally less than a foot away from the damn wow. pump. It's freezing out. Have oh a heart. She kept shutting it off. Ooh, what a yeah. little witchy poo. Yeah. I'm that's like, funny. Are you it's, kidding me? Not, yeah. Oh, well, wow. but see, the thing about it is, though, um, I think uh, generationally speaking, uh, in the famous words of John F. Kennedy, ask not what your country can do for, for you, you, but what you, you can, can do, do for, for your country. country. Yeah. And we used to have those programs where, you know, after high school, there was, a, you know, you, you, you served in the, in, in the Corps, in the Service Corps. So I think there was more of an a, a, a emphasis placed on service just in general. Yeah. And yeah. me growing up in the military, you know, in, even to this day, sometimes, you know, it, everything is yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, right. sir, no, sir. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first started, you know, fraternizing with the world, it was just habit. And I would do that. People would look at me like, don't. Where are you from? Yeah, yeah, South? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm like, no, I'm a northern boy. I'm a Yankee. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but I, mm -hmm. I kind of think that. Um, that lack of focus today is sometimes, uh, and, and I don't mean this to say this pejoratively, but um, young people, especially, um, uh, I don't want to categorize young people and, and put them in a in a box, but I, I do hear and see where. That level of disrespect mm -hmm. is just like, whoa, yes. really? And I'm going to share something if you give me a, a moment. Um, just, just here, and these are some of the results that I use when I, when I teach in some of the classes. During recent job interviews, okay, recent employers have said about the younger generation. Mm -hmm. Now, these are, these are statistics that I have. Okay, this is not me. Um, our younger generation struggle with eye contact. 53% yeah. of the employers said that. They asked for unreasonable compensation, 30 per, or 50% asked for, like, you know, something way above of what they're, they're just expecting. I want $50 an hour, you know. Um, they dressed inappropriately. Oh, my goodness. That was 47%. They came in with, you know, something yeah. ridiculous. Uh, used inappropriate language. Now, this is in an interview. Wow. Okay, they're talking about, and this is from, from one of our, our major, I'm not going to say, news outlets, um, refused to turn on a camera during a virtual interview, wow. you know, which, you know, saying, wow. nope, I'm not going to be really? on that, you know. And then the last one was brought, this one just makes me cringe, brought a parent to the interview. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's I happened mean, to me. When are I, you kidding When me? I was hiring staff, the parent came in. But I can tell you, I was doing a promotion for Panera. Um, a few years back and uh, props off to the manager up there Brian he's a great guy and he, he was great at what he did but he it was right after the pandemic so they right. really needed to try and hire staff and get staff right back away in the stores um, and he had an interview and the kid came in and in uh, I don't want to this call it you know the the term that is known by a wife beater. What what else? Yes. What is it? So it's like a tank top. Uh, uh, yeah, like a, a gentleman's tank yeah. top. Yeah. A wife beater. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he came in in a wife beater and said, "Hi, I'm here for the interview." And I turned around like, and the manager Brian said, I "I'm sorry, I can't interview you like that. Do you can you run to Target and buy a shirt? If not." Do you possibly have a shirt? I will hold this interview spot open yeah. for another 15, 20 minutes. Do you have anything in your car that you can put on? I don't care if it has wrinkles on it, right. but I cannot interview you in a wife beater. So then he and became a boss beater? <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at Brian and I said, Brian, wait a minute. He really came to an interview in, in a wife beater? And, and Brian's like, this is what we deal with on a regular basis. He goes, these kids are coming to interviews like this. And he literally was like, you know, please run to, run to Target, even if you want to return it after. Like, oh, I want to hear what did the kid say? He goes, uh, I'll, I don't know. I'll look. And I think he ended up going out to his car and he must have had something, you know, under his seat somewhere. 
<laughs> and came back. I'm sure it was a gray flannel with, shirt. Yeah. <laughs> he came back with a, in a t-shirt. Do you remember? Do you know that commercial? Huh, you look really comfortable. And the guy, she's on a date with a guy, and he has this. Oh, and it's all crinkled uh, and wrinkled. Yeah, yeah. And I the neck is all, like, yeah. stretched out. But, yeah, so he ended up coming back in a t-shirt, and Brian ended up interviewing him. But, you know, it, it, it was just, like, shocking to me. And, and, and again, you know, the, the downfall, I wish we could go back, and I'm dating myself, but, like, to the 50s and 60s where people dressed appropriately oh yeah I mean and they overdressed and I'm sorry like when they went grocery shopping all the women had their their <laughs> little hats on their pillbox <laughs> hats and their suits and the gentlemen had on their three-piece suit and they went and their shoes and everything now I mean you're lucky like you said you're going into yeah. with a wife beater and you know pants down here and I pajama just like pants. they said I can't don't go there with pajama <laughs> pants um, but again, I mean, the, the, and I'm not picking on the younger generation, but unfortunately, they are the ones that are showing this, which just goes to show you that the households and the parents are not teaching them the, the norms of society, which are dress correctly, clean yeah, yourself, yeah. and what have you. And I'm sorry, I will not. We, when we held interviews of, uh, a couple of years back, about three years ago at the food bank, I had people come in and all kinds of different things um, that showed up. And I was looking to hire somebody who was going to be a representative for the front desk. And that made a big difference in what you were wearing. Oh, yeah. I didn't need a three-piece suit, but I also didn't need, you know, ripped jeans, uh, purple, orange, and green hair, you know, piercings. And, and that was not what I wanted for my food bank, you know, so. Well, I think with that being said, we can uh, do our public service bit for uh, our big shout outs. Uh, All let's right. do a big city shout out. So I'm going to, okay, so T Town shout outs or big city sponsors? T Town shout outs. T Town shout outs is sponsored by Torrington Downtown Partners, growing downtown Torrington, one business at a time. Dawn's Getaway, 24 Winston Road, Torrington. Christie's Restaurant, 545 Winston Road. Health Insurance Services, 438 Main Street. Next, we have Wall Wall and Fraunhofer, 117 Main Street, Torrington. Soul Latina Cafe, 31 Hungerford Street, Torrington. Jimmy's Store, 1238 East Main Street, Torrington. Great food. Five Points Art Center, 855 University Drive, and George's Music, 905 New Hollington Road, Torrington. Absolutely. And let me tell you, if you're looking for a fabulous grinder in Torrington, Jimmy's is the only Listen, place to go. I went there because I did not want to cook and I bought um, meal for four oh. of, um, of the chicken masala, just yes. the chicken masala. I yeah. figured I could make rice at home or whatever. And it was 11 bucks uh -huh. to feed four people. Yeah. I'm like, this is great. His hot food service there, yeah. Jimmy's, yeah. is, but his grinders, I'm sorry. Now that Carbones is gone, hands down, the best grinder in the city it is takes, Jimmy's. And that's just my opinion. So don't you be calling it right. It, takes, it, it takes me three days to eat the grinder. Man. Oh, my God, because like, there's so much meat on it, but they're crazy. fresh and everything. Yeah. So, Rob at Jimmy's, you're doing a fabulous job. We love your food. So, so what's up with our um, big city sponsors? Oh, so we have Toth Insurance Agency. 1151 East Main Street, Torrington. Better protection, better value. 860-496-7771. Toth INS at optonline.net. Mel Brickman and Health Markets, 16 McDermott Ave, Suite 1, Torrington. Better, better call, call Mel. 860-307-1128. Healthmarkets.com slash local dash health dash INS. Brooke Todds and McNeil Insurance, 69 Water Street, Torrington. Keeping an eye on your insurance needs since 1839, 860-598-8753, brookstoddmcneil.com. Dr. Michael Curry, 30 Peck Road, Suite 2105, Torrington. Pediatric care for over 50 years, 860-42-8177, torringtonpediatrics.com. And thank you so much to our big city sponsors. And thank my lovely co-host for another episode of and City Views. Well. Thank you. And thank, thank you. all of you for tuning, for tuning in. in. Make sure you check us out Saturdays at 9 a.m., Sundays at 3 p.m. And if you want to engage with City Views, you can do so on our Facebook page or check us out on our YouTube page at City Views CT. In the meantime, we'll see you back next week. Enjoy this Bye. wonderful spring weather and be see nice ya. to somebody. Make it happen. <laughs>
city.